in this next one, we're going to animate a couple more properties across multiple layers. More importantly, though, I think one thing we haven't covered is how do you import assets from Sketch and Figma? So let's do Sketch first. Just like with Illustrator, there's kind of an old school way and a new school way. I'm going to show you both just so you can see the difference. The old school way, of course, I'm actually not even going to go through the whole thing because it's kind of the same as the other. The old school way is you select your layers, you hit this little um, thing here to select SVG, you export them out, export selected. Now, of course, you export them as SVGs. You can imagine what I'm going to do now. You open up Illustrator open with Illustrator, right? And now you do the whole thing. You, 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 if you don't even have old Overlord, again, we're doing true old school, and you don't even have Overlord. You're saving this as an AI, yada, 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 yada. We're not gonna do that way. The new school way is to use a plugin called AEUX. So if you go to aeux.io, or you just Google search AEUX, it should be the first result. This tool allows you to send vector assets directly from Sketch right into After Effects. It's very similar to Overlord, and actually it was made by Adam Plouf, the same guy who made Overlord. The guy's a freaking genius. So I don't think I have it on this machine, so we'll download it, download and install. Do it right here to the desktop. Open up this zip. Can tell you the reason why we don't have it is because we don't use Sketch at our Airbnb anymore. So now I need to install the Sketch plugin. Oh, I do have it installed. Never mind. And then here's that ZXP again. So ZXP installer. Drag it right on top. Press OK. All right, and we're good to go. You do need to restart After Effects when you install this. I'm going to open up our same file again. And what you need to do is the AEUX plugin in After Effects, you can see Window Extensions AEUX is right here. When you're in Sketch, you can also open the AEUX panel. When you're in Sketch, and you have this little panel that you've opened, when you select the artboard and you hit Send Selection to AE, you'll see it builds your composition and puts all the layers that were in Sketch in here. And one of the reasons why is because I have this new comp selected. This time, we're gonna do Current Comp, and we're gonna bring the arrow in. Same thing, select the artboard, Send Selection to AE, Come back here, and now it's added the arrow right in here. Make sure I save. Now you can see how much easier it is to import these assets as you know with AEUX as opposed to the other way. Let me quickly show you how to use AEUX with Figma. I'm going to open up Figma. It's very similar but different. There is no panel, there is no plugin. What you have to do is come on to the AEUX site and hit Figma Converter. And since Figma is web-based, what you need to do is copy your Figma URL by com control clicking here, copy link. You need to copy it into here, hit this arrow. And what that does is now it shows you the page and the artboards that you have. And when you download them, it'll allow you to save the JSON, a, a JSON file that has all the information. So I'll just save that here. I'll save this one right next to it. And then instead of it going directly in, you just need to drag it right on top of this panel. So I'm gonna do it in the current one just because we're already in here. Just to show you, AUX arrow, drag it right on. AUX hamburger, drag it right on. And so as you can see, you're getting the same, the same layers, the same names, everything 
One's coming from Sketch, another's coming from Figma. I'll delete these. And next I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup because as you can see, I've got this layer that shows the center point of the arrow. I'm gonna delete that. I don't think I need that. Keep in mind every single layer that you have in your compositions adding data. So whenever you can do cleanup is really important. This one here, I am gonna keep this one. I'm gonna name it rotator because I'm gonna use this to rotate around. What I am gonna do is use these three layers and I'm gonna use this arrow just as a guide. I'm not even gonna actually need it. So I am gonna turn this into a guide layer. What a guide layer does is it exists in your comp. You can see it while you're working, but when you render, it's invisible. And when you export to Lottie, it doesn't come in with the data. It stays out unless you're using body movement and you, you select export guides with it. So I am going to turn this not into a guide layer. And I'm going to do a little cleanup on this layer just to make sure that there's nothing in here I don't need. See, again, you got a fill and a stroke. I actually don't need that. I don't even need the path. I just need this anchor point. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is just rename these layers real quick. Next, I'm going to do the keyframes for the rotation. So I'll take this rotator and hit R to reveal a rotation like we looked at before. Oh, I realize this comp is 50 seconds long. So let me trim that to five seconds and actually three seconds. I'm gonna rotate this a full 180. I'm not gonna eyeball this because I want it to be perfect. Type in 180. And what I'm gonna do is each of these three lines, I'm gonna reposition them as it spins so that they perfectly match this arrow. So I know I'm gonna need to change the position. So you could do this one of two ways. You could drill down in here, open this up, and you could change each path. Now each path, you would have to change each path point and you'd have to animate them for each layer. Now each path point has data and each time you animate a path point, you're gonna have more data. So instead of animating the path, I'm gonna drill back out and change the scale instead. So I'm gonna add this and instead of scaling like this, I only want it to be one direction. So I'm gonna take the link off of each of these. So when I scale it, it's gonna scale in and out. So now that this is here, I'm gonna open this up, come into here, and this is really where I want it to be an arrow. One thing I did just forget, rotation. So I just held shift and press R if I were to just press R, it would only bring up rotation. When you hold shift and you press the other ones, it reveals them as well and keeps the one you had. So I come back here with K. I go back with, sorry, come back there with J and come back with K. And this one here, I'm gonna rotate this way. It's probably 45. Yeah, negative 45. And then, whoops, that's the middle one. Name this one here 45 and actually that's a good idea I should name this middle and this one will be named top and this one will be named bottom okay even though it's flipped this one's actually at the top hmm that's trippy I'm going to scale this down and what I just see here is there's strokes on here I'm gonna delete all the strokes from these because I'm not gonna need them I'm gonna select all layers by doing Command A. I'm gonna search for a stroke. And now I'm just gonna delete all of them. Okay, I come back here and hit U. And now I don't have those pesky strokes. So I know that I have these guides that show me where my arrow shapes are. I'm actually gonna line up my shapes directly on top. So I'm gonna snap to the anchor point here. 
You can do that. If you're dragging and it's not snapping, you can hold command and it'll snap to the closest edge or anchor point. So I'm gonna snap onto this. Now I'm gonna come in here and scale this right to the edge. That value is 50. So I'm actually going to change this one to 50 because I already know that that's gonna be 50. And I'm gonna scale this one right on top, snap it on here. And I don't need these guys anymore. I'm gonna delete those. The last thing is to make sure that this line gets as small as the other line. So I'll start out by scaling this down and I'm gonna do the same snapping. And I do wanna make sure I'm not poking out over here. So I'll do like this. And actually maybe I'll just move it a little bit. So one thing about moving layers, let's say I have this selected and I move this, you can see it's, it's moving this keyframe here. But if I have the shape selected, let me open this up and select the shape. You can see how you have these white boxes, uh, the white little boxes around the edge. If you move this, now you're not moving that position keyframe, you're actually moving the group and that's not what I want to do so be conscious of that when you're moving layers around it's something that I've picked up over the years moving this one by accident so many times um, but be conscious of what a layer looks like before you move it to make sure you're moving the right thing so let's trim our comp and just give this a play and see how it works so first thing I'm gonna do is trim this in I'm just gonna hit whoops I'm gonna hit N, trim this in. And there we go, let me delete a guide here. And there we go, I think I'll make it a little bit faster, seems a little sluggish. All right. One thing to note here is I have this rotation keyframe here that keyframe is not even actually doing anything. So I'm gonna turn it off. If I did leave that keyframe on, it's just data in my file that I don't need. And again, like I'm saying, when you get to more complicated projects, if you have a bunch of these keyframes that are just hanging out doing nothing, except bloating your file, it could be a problem. So let's do the same thing we did before. Select all the keyframes, easy ease. expand this out and now what I wanted to do is actually keep rotating around the other way so here's a little thing I do sometimes I know that I want this distance 27 to be exactly the same so if this is 27 what you can do is do plus 27 and it'll move the frames it'll move 27 frames in that direction but if you do plus negative 27, then it moves back 27 frames. So we'll do plus 27, and we'll set another keyframe. And instead of copy and pasting this one, we're gonna go around, do a full rotation. And now what we can do is copy and paste all of these. One thing to keep in mind when you're copying, pasting keyframes across different layers, if you tried to select all these and copy paste, it's actually creating new layers. You can't do that in After Effects unless you have a couple of scripts. One of the scripts is called paste multiple keyframes. So when I select these and hit this, it'll actually do it. You can get this script from AE Scripts. The manual way to do it if you don't have these is to select the keyframes within a layer and copy and paste them individually. All right. I think actually what I want to do is have a little pause in here. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four frames ahead. And I'm gonna copy and paste these. I'm gonna do it the old school way. Instead, and then I'll one, two, three, four. And then I'll move this ahead. Because I want a little pause in here before it, before it spins back.
Now it's spinning all the way around. What happened here? Oh, because I have one 180. We hit that to zero. So now it just comes once. All right. I am going to come in here, select these, open the graph editor, and I'm going to make this a little bit snappier. So my little pick whip here is hidden by this thing. Sometimes if you zoom in, you select them again, the box will get smaller so you can actually see your, your pick whip. There's another thing I want to point out, which is if you have properties that are selected and some properties have one value and other properties have two values and the two values can be linked, if the, prop, the two value properties aren't linked and you move this, you can see this pick whip moved, but this one stayed the same. If you want them both to stay the same, you need to link these back before you change the easing. Whoops, select this. And now when you change this, they'll both come. And now I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Sometimes when you're working with something that has multiple values and they're not linked, it can give you some funky things. So whenever you can, link those properties before you ease them. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. Let's trim it. Let's save. Let's export it. Let's upload it. And now, there you have it. All right, that's all I got. We created three animations here, the heart animation, the spinner, the hamburger to arrow animation. I really hope you learned a lot from this lesson. Keep thinking about how to make your animations more efficient. Keep thinking about how to reduce things from multiple comps to one layer, removing keyframes, and keep trying to make your files as small and compact as possible. Jump into the next chapter, which continues working with shape layers and the After Effects graph editor.